to the Financial Bulletin. U.S. markets opened sharply lower. The ruble plunged as much as 30 percent to an all-time low against the dollar. Hong Kong Monetary Authority said the city's banking system has minimal exposure to Russia. Asian shares slipped amid the Ukraine war. U.S. futures also fell with a contract for the S&P 500 down to... That's our financial bulletin. Stay tuned for the roundup coming up next. Good evening and thanks for joining us. For the first time, Hong Kong's daily COVID infection has passed the 30,000 mark, registering another daily record high. Over 190,000 people have been infected in this recent wave of the pandemic. Meanwhile, panic buying was seen across town over fears of the possible full-scale lockdown during the compulsory testing campaign. Row upon row of shelves emptied at supermarkets. Eggs, dairy products and frozen meat to instant noodles, rice and canned food have been wiped clean at some stores. Some patrons say they'd rather be safe than sorry. It's better to buy more than less. Chief Executive Carol Lam, meanwhile, urges for calm, assuring that there would be enough supplies of daily grocery and food for the SAR. Local schools will have an early summer holiday beginning no later than March the 17th. But the public exams will be held as scheduled unless the city's pandemic of coronavirus cases soars. The chief executive wants citywide compulsory tests in March. Tonight, she said Hong Kong residents might be screened based on family units. That, she says, could be more effective than the earlier plan to have people tested in batches based on their Hong Kong ID cards or age. The city's health chief, meanwhile, said the government is still considering imposing a complete wholesale lockdown. Timothy Lee reports. Overseas talks without preconditions are taking place on the Belarusian Ukrainian border between Russia and Ukraine. So far, no outcome has been seen. This as Russia banned Germany, France, Italy, Spain, and 23 other countries from using its airspace. And Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov canceled a trip to Geneva, as now he can no longer fly through European airspace. Matthew Bray reports. Option. The United Nations Security Council has voted for the 193-member General Assembly to hold an emergency session on Russia's invasion of Ukraine today. The vote by the 15-member council was procedural, so Russia could not veto it. Russians in cities across the vast nation have been pro- the wartime president Volodymyr Zelensky tells his people to stand and fight. NBC News has more about his rise from comedian to a commander of a nation under attack. Staring directly into the camera, exhausted, unshaven, in a t-shirt, this is how we've started to see Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky multiple times a day at all hours since the invasion started, taking to social media, updating his country and the world, rallying his fellow citizens to fight. Last night was harsh, he says. They are fighting against everyone and everything alive. In another post last Thursday, walking through the capital, good morning, he says, there are a lot of fakes out there, but I'm here. The one stand-up comedian came to power in 2019 in a landslide Democratic election. Just a month after the finale of his hit show, Servant of the People, where he played an unlikely president on TV. Three years later, the 44-year-old father of two has emerged as a convincing wartime leader. When the U.S. offered to evacuate him from the country, he reportedly told them, I need ammunition, not a ride. While his adversary in Moscow talks of getting rid of the Nazis, President Zelensky, from a Russian-speaking Jewish family who lost relatives in the Holocaust, has emerged even stronger. His approval ratings in 2020 were slumping. He had not made much progress on peace talks with Moscow or rooting out corruption. But at the Munich Security Conference earlier this month, the world met a different leader. I think that is all for, not for me, for Ukraine and for our soldiers. Thank you so much. A leader now taking front and center stage, fighting for his country's survival. Molly Hunter, NBC News. Back locally, Chinese medicine practitioners and charity organizations have joined forces to ease pressure on the public health system and give help to COVID patients, Sharon Tang reports. The weather before we go, it will become cloudy, warm and sunny periods in the day. A minimum temperature of 18 degrees and a maximum of 24 degrees. And that's the news for tonight. Thanks for watching and good night.